Old Uncle Ed is a real nice man. You like him. You know, I'm sure you're going to be all right. I guess so. Be careful. Hernandez, Sanchez, Vic, Lewis, and you two, come with me. All right, folks, don't move. Uh, look who's here, Sam Judd. I said don't move, you two. Be sure you keep your hands where I can see them. Steve, Lewis, get their guns. Well, Sam, how's business? 
Now, ain't you going to offer us a drink, gringo? I reckon you can afford it. You must be doing pretty well here. Hey, I wonder where he got the money to buy this place. Well, if he won't give us a drink, we'll give you one. You dirty double-crosser. But what do you mean by all this? I don't get it. Shut up. Sanchez, serve the drinks. Where do you think you're going? We offer you a drink. It ain't polite to refuse. <coughs> drink, damn no, drink. No, no. Maybe this taquito will wash the smell of the pig's die off you and you can go to hell clean. <laughs> drink, I say. Drink. <laughs> Tell the boy please, to get ready. No, stop, please. <laughs> I feel sorry for them poor bastards and Anders. It was a wrong day for them to meet Mash Flanagan. Set fire to the place. Hurry. With pleasure, boss. like that, I reckon no one else will feel like giving information to the lawman.
Listen. Wait here. I'll have a look. Marty, come and help me, will you? Who is he? What's wrong with him? Uh huh. Don't ask questions. Uh, easy, does it? Uh. Go boil some water. Hurry, Archie. Yeah, sure. You're wounded pretty bad, fella. There. Does that feel all right? <laughs> That feels much better, thank you. I should be going. You and your dad have done a lot for me. And I won't ever forget it. There, take this. May be useful to you. But you ought to rest up a little bit longer. That was a real nasty wound you had there. How much do I owe you, mister? Oh, you don't mean nothing. But why don't you stay a few more days? Margie and me be glad of the company. I'm afraid I can't. Thanks. So long. Adios, sweetheart. We're in trouble, Mash. Good night we got Sam Judd. Why, what's wrong? We thought we took care of all the witnesses. Of course we did. There was that one who got away. Got away? Who? How? You better start explaining. Give me some of that coffee. Here's the way I heard it. Sheriff of Silver City and his men buried the bodies and then went through the ashes. Looking for clues. Eventually they found something. The sheriff spotted some blood stains in the back of the tavern, fresh ones. And there was a trail of blood leading away into the hills. And the sheriff says, whoever was responsible for committing this massacre left this trail. Come on, we'll follow it. So the posse followed the blood stains. But somewhere up on the hills, the trail petered out. Whoever it was must have a pretty tough hide. A bounty killer would be hot in our track, Sturgis. We could ambush him easily. But if it was only one of those ranchers, he'll tell the sheriff about us. You can count on it. Then we gotta make plans. We'll move out of here. We all split up and look out for ourselves, and that goes for everybody. You can stay with me. I'd like to stay with you, too. Well, the decision's up to you. If you all stay with me, we can organize differently. Well, Vic, what are you going to do? I won't leave you. Neither will he. I give you my word. I uh, know. He's still a bit green. you got to be more careful. You might lose a good finger. 
get a doctor for this man right away. Go. Get going. It's laid out for the big fight, so tomorrow everybody finds out how good your boy is. Uh, sure, Billy. Sure. And you'll find out he's much better than yours. Hey, Sturgis, you have to leave right away. You shouldn't stick around here if you want to get to San Antonio by tomorrow morning. Donovan, I'm on my way. And find out all you can about that stranger. Someone must have seen him around. Don't worry, Donovan. If he's around, we'll find him. Come on. You mean you still haven't found that stranger? Mm -mm, not a sign of him. Uh. It's only about a month since the raid. Perhaps his wound isn't healed yet. But those three men who got shot at San Miguel, how about that? Yeah, that might be some kind of advance warning from this man who's got y'all so worried. Don't try to think too hard, Fanny. Your little brain is far too delicate. <laughs> All right, give me your attention now. With your permission, Mr. Donovan, we'll start the show. And now I have the great honor to present to you folks one of the most celebrated singers of the French music hall, Miss Rosie Lamour.
like a girl like me. He will hold me, he will kiss me, and me think that you, I will find my man. We we cheek a cheek a cheek a cheek. Hi yeah. folks you're waiting for have arrived. Clear out. Evening, Mr. Donovan, sir. Here I am. Howdy, Tiger. Before tomorrow, you and Bert go to Billy Ross and talk to him. You'll have to convince him that his boy must lose. Naturally, I put our money on Tiger here, you can be sure. Ross is a pretty rough type. He might object to our methods of persuasion. <laughs> well, I don't care if he does. As long as you find a way to convince him. I'm sure you won't really have any trouble making him see the light. Suppose he don't. <laughs> <laughs> You're funny. Hey, boss. Yeah, what do you want? You know, three men are here. You're funny, too. Send them in. Um, these are the three men I told you about, Mash. As gunfighters, they are worth their weight in gold. Peter Martel, the fastest gun in the West, the most wanted outlaw in the country, $5,000 reward, a dozen robberies, and 22 murders. He's so good at turning out corpses that one funeral parlor thought of hiring him as a procurer of clients, naturally. Gordon Mitchell, born to kill, known to his friends as the devil's henchman, 10 holdups. 20 notches on his gun barrel, and all for killings in self-defense. He has to look after himself, because there's lots of bounty killers out to get him. Also 5,000 reward. Lincoln Tate, the most ferocious knife thrower in the country. His specialty is robbing banks. He's wanted in every state in the Union, plus Canada and Mexico. He started playing with knives when he was four and cut his first throw two years later. Got many throats since then. Also 5,000 reward on his head. This is the first installment for them and their men. Right. All of you have had plenty of experience. I need men who are tough, but you'll get well paid as long as you work for it. That's one thing you can count on for sure. But any traders won't have a chance to spend any of their earnings. And you can count on that too. I see we all agree. That's all. Welcome to San Antonio, stranger. My name's Casper. What's yours? What brings you around these here parts? 
look after your horse if you'll buy me a drink. Okay, Casper. Thanks, Sonny. Watch your step. This here's a tough town. Bring me something to eat and a beer. Well, I don't remember seeing him here. Samuel, what do you think you're doing? Serve the customer. And you go fill the tub, beautiful. I feel like having a nice hot bath. Oh, really? I can't think why. Didn't you just have one last week? You can week? scrub my back. And don't forget to tell Jack and the others to be ready with the horses in a couple of hours. Oh, you're full of orders, ain't you? Thanks, amigo. Don't get upset. Just take it easy. You see, when I figure on striking a match on the shoulder of the first muck spreading hayseed that I run into, it brings me luck for the whole day. <laughs> hey, Sturgis! We're all set. All ready? But I gotta have a hot bath first. I want to soften these calluses I'm sitting on. Besides, we got a visitor. Seems like a real gentleman, don't he? Mm. Hey, these beans is good. Just how I like them. <coughs> oh, that ain't a very nice way to act. No point in struggling, stranger. Here, John. See if he's got any money. <coughs> Samuel! <laughs> I reckon he was kind of tuckered out. He needs a little rest. All right, come on. Howdy, Mr. Ross. You're pretty busy, I guess. I am. Why? Let's go for a walk. We want to talk to you. Easy. <laughs> what is this? Relax, boss. You got no choice. You got to tell your kid <clears throat> to take a fall. Mr. Donovan is risking a lot of money. Uh, but he'll be generous with you. He'll give you $500. Oh, and one more thing. We always pay very punctual. What do we pay in gold? Or pay in bullets. Understand? Mr. Ross. Lady 
Ladies and gentlemen, I have the honor to present the challenging contender, Willie Tiger, winner in 43 straight contests, promoted by Mr. Donovan. I remind you folks that this is a contest with no time limit and will conclude only when one of the contestants counted out. And now may I introduce the champion and title holder, Michael Black. All right, boys, get going. Top-notch form today, Billy. No, well, ain't that great. Only I'm not very interested anymore. On account of you, we got to beat it out of this place because you refuse to take a fall. You got nothing to worry about, Billy. I reckon now I'm the toughest man in America. I think I could beat John L. Sullivan. Here we are, Billy, with the payment. <laughs> Who's the girl? Who, her? Hmm. She's just a little whore they procured. 
She has to entertain the boys in the gang whenever they come to town and stop for a day or two. Uh, these men, who are they? Who are they working for? As for the men, they're the worst kind of riffraff scraped together from all over the country. Sturgis is the one who does the hiring, only he ain't the real boss. Go on. They commit all kinds of crimes. They get paid after every job, so they're free to go if they feel like doing so. Or they can just stick around till the next job comes along. Fact is, around their hangout in this town, you never see the same faces. Except for Sturgis. He's always there. Have you ever managed to find out who really hires him? I have a darn good idea. One night, about a couple of months ago, a whole crowd arrived at once, 20 or 30, a huge bunch it was. And Sturgis and one of the others had a long talk at the tavern. He seemed to be their boss. I recognized him right away. The famous Mash Flanagan. At least that's what he looked like. But when he left with the other men, I overheard Sturgis calling him Donovan. Now this Donovan. Whereabouts was he heading? I don't know where he was headed. But you know, it was him who sent that girl to the saloon. And she says that she thinks Donovan is still living somewhere near Silver City. But you haven't begun your dinner yet. I'll have mine at the saloon. But just a minute now. You want to be murdered? Hmm. I've got just what you need. You can have this pistol. Purdy, eh? Huh? I pinched it off the corpse of this Mexican bandit that got killed about a year ago. It's loaded. No doubt about it. You'll manage it a lot better than me. Yeah, I will, Casper. I will. You bet you're right. closed. I want the eggs well done. I said we're closed now and I tell you I'm not cooking nothing. And a cold beer. Go wash your ears out, Hayseed. You ain't getting served here. <laughs> Don't you ever get tired?
Sounds like shooting. Wait for me, honey. <coughs> Samuel! Samuel! John! What's going on here? Why don't you answer? What kind of game you... Don't move, Sturgis. Drop your gun. You hear me? Now you're going to tell me where to find that Flanagan or Donovan or whatever his name is. Come on, talk. At Golden City. Tell him his time's about run out. <laughs> Amen. <clears throat> Give me a little. Oh, leave me alone. I've got a terrible migraine. And I've got work to do, not like some people. What the devil you mean, Fanny? You're always making out you're sick. Well, you're not a woman. You leave me alone, you oaf ass! You watch your language, you bitch! <laughs> That makes you feel good, Mash, don't it? You begin slapping me whenever you can't work out your own problems, mister. What are my problems? What do you know? It's all over your face. You're worried about that man who's been looking for you. You can't get that out of your mind. <laughs> I don't think that by now we'll hear any more of him. So you don't need to fret your little head about that fella. But what if he's still searching for you? You never know when he might pop up. You shouldn't think so much. There's other things you do much better, and you don't do them enough. Leave me alone. I don't want to. Who is it? It's me, boy. <sighs> what do you want? Sturgis is here. He's got news for you. I'm too busy to be interrupted. This is no joke, Mash. I really think you should come down. Devil, take him. Oh, fool, you dirty, rotten fool, you bastard! You find the man I'm looking for and you let him slip through your fingers. But how do you know he wasn't mistaken? Why don't you listen? Huh? Pay a little attention. The stranger he described is just like one of those men who was there in the tavern, idiot. He sure ain't joking. He's already knocked out six of us. Yeah. And he's already halfway here, thanks to this numbskull. I'm sorry about that, Mash, but I... Shut your trap! The reason I spared your life is because I owed you a favor. Now the debt's been paid! This means trouble. I suppose we better send the boys after him. No, we'll let him come to us. That's the only answer. Before he arrives, you'll be all set. Shooting him will earn you a big bonus, $1,000. Well, I'll be the one to get it. You can count on that. Good for you, birds. Then you can buy us all around the drinks. <laughs> you see, I was right after all. I thought that fellow would get here. That's a woman's intuition for you. Even if he finds me, I'm not worried. I'm the proprietor of the saloon, the wealthy Mr. Denovan. I'm respected by the people here. Before he can make any accusations against me, he'll be eliminated. Of course, Mash. You've thought of everything, haven't you? So there's nothing to be afraid of after all. One man can't disturb you, huh? One dumb rancher. No, not him nor anybody. And you know that, too. Uh, sure, sure. The man had never been born and had Flanagan running scared. Sure, Mash. I was just joking. I've decided to keep out of sight tonight. 
You stay in the saloon and see you keep a sharp lookout. Get. So tough, ain't you? Why? I said get! any strangers there on the place? Nope. Vamanos. Thank you. 
You sure ain't been very it's lucky. Smitty. Howdy. We're looking for someone, Smitty. These boys are all regulars. Who is it? Stranger in town. If you see him, let me know right away. Okay, don't worry. Hold on a jiffy. Someone did come in a while ago. Had a good look around the room and sat there. He started a hand of solitaire, but he never finished. Then he left. I noticed him because he was packing a real nifty pistol. What was he like? Oh, he was pretty tall, looked mean. As if something wasn't quite right up there, you know. Uh, you never saw is... nobody, that's me. I never saw anyone. <laughs> <laughs> you think it's funny, huh? <laughs> <laughs> about them stars. There must have been a million of them. Oh, let me go. Oh, I can good. walk by myself. <clears throat> what do you think you're doing? That's crushed. Take it easy. Look out, the door's out. Oh, yeah, yeah, I know. The door. It's closed. Five other men can carry out a street-by-street -street search of the whole place. That's the only way we can make him come out of hiding. No one here in Golden City will dare help him. So he won't have an easy time. Don't worry, boss. He can't be far. Now, the minute you locate him, start shooting and try to get him with the first shot. Is that clear? You all know how much the bonus is for the man who manages to shoot him. And besides that, the pistol shots will be a signal to the rest of our men in the saloon. Now we got to plan our next job. Get going, Burton. I've checked everything, Mash. 
I don't think there's going to be any real difficulty. And I've turned the mountain trail. So I know how long it'll take for us to get away if we're followed. The cart with the usual four men will be at Red Rock on Tuesday morning at 9.30, more or less. Good planning, Hernandez. I believe that job should be simple. In the meanwhile, send someone over to talk to the goldsmith. Why? What's wrong? The old bass has forgotten to pay us. Collect the money he owes us and teach him a damn good lesson. streets to the left. Come on, boys. We gotta hurry if we want to get to the goldsmith before dawn. shot you. Well, ain't nothing to joke about. We could have killed each other. We better stick together. I ain't hankering to die. You seen anything? Well, ain't nothing wrong. Whoa. Thank <laughs> you. 
Jeff! Bill! Marty! Albert! Frank! Start talking. How much is Donovan paying you? He's paying a thousand. I'll give you two thousand. Here's one thousand dollars in advance. Take this hat and my gun. Take him to your boss. Say that you killed me. I'll be waiting for you at the edge of town. And when you bring back my gun, you'll get the other thousand dollars. And don't try to double cross me. You'll regret it. Good for you, Bert. You've really done mighty fine. Mm -hmm. mm. That's your bonus, Bert. Oh, I'd rather hang on to it. It's so much better than mine. Okay, by me. Thanks. Thank you, boss. Mister, what's a dead man need money for? <laughs> so you won't pay, huh? No. Then we have another card to play that'll be more convincing. Bring the girl over here. No! No! Here, hello. Let go of my poor daughter. Let go! Let me go! That's it, honey. Keep fighting, dear. You rotten, dirty coyotes. You let go of my sister. I'll kill you. I'll kill you. Help! Watch out! Get outside, you bastards!
The stranger killed Champ. Come on, let's get our horses. We gotta catch let's him. Let's go. Oh, no way. you? What do you want? Ma'am, I'm Sam Wallace. We met before. You saw me in the saloon the other night. I'm a friend of your friend. 
Ah, so you're the fellow that Donovan was trying to catch. Surprise. But I thought they'd shot you. Well, that's what Match thinks. But I'm going to surprise him, too. And I'm sure you can help me if you really want to, ma'am. Hmm? You expect me to betray Donovan, is that it? Mm-hmm. It won't be difficult. But you're right. You will have to betray him. I'm sorry I have to ask you. But you don't know any loyal leader or a man like him. Maybe so. But it ain't easy for a girl like me to change her mind. To have to admit she was wrong. <laughs> Dreadful story, Sarah. I never meant to get involved with Donovan. It wasn't what I wanted to do. It's just that a mistake. Just that a woman needs someone. But that doesn't excuse it. Only now, he's impossible. I've had all I can take from Donovan. What I'd like is to go back to Danville and see all my family again. He's a criminal. He'll get his, that's all. That's impossible for you alone. If I could only catch him when he's pulling one of his jobs. That would be the right way. Really, Sam? Here in Golden City, you'll never have the chance to settle the score with Mash Flanagan. Everybody has to protect him even if they don't want to. He never goes anywhere without one or two of his bodyguards, and he doesn't even carry a pistol. Well, I intend to get... Get back there!
What the devil's going on? What's wrong? Did something upset you, Fanny? Nothing. I've just tripped and dropped a pitcher, but I've got a terrible migraine now. I feel like having a little rest. You and your migraine headaches. You know, if you leave the window open like that, you'll catch something else, too, without even trying. I guess I should be more careful. How did it go today? Did you settle everything? I always settle things my way. Hernandez, tell the men to be ready at 5 o'clock. Tomorrow morning we have that job to do. Prepare whatever you're going to need for it. And you, Fanny, make sure you don't have one of your damn migraines. We'll expect to meet you and the Shea at the crossroads for San Pablo. Is that clear now? At around noon. Come on. Did you hear that? Planning big things. That bastard. He'll get his all right. This is the chance I've been waiting for. And you two, there. And you, in that direction. Hey, Hernandez, there. Come on on the left. Two others with him. Sturgis on the cliff. It's Josh. Thank you. 
Damn you, Wallace! Come back here! You bastard! Amen. <laughs> 